Hi guys, welcome to Wasted Lunch. Perfect place to waste your lunch. I'm Paul McVeigh. What's happening, guys? Let's see, today was a Wednesday. Wednesday. Time is, oh my goodness, 12 o'clock on the dot oven standard time. I'm actually not early, not a little bit late. I'm actually right on time today, amazingly. Wow. Anyways, very overcast day here in northern Ohio. Um, what's happening, guys? I'll tell you what's happening with me. Last night, watched watched uh, old favorite of mine. I <clears throat> well, favorite of a lot of people's for this time of the year. Um, I'm gonna watch a Halloween show, traditional Halloween. Uh, movie with the kids last night, so, um, watched Charlie Brown, what is it, it's a great, chum, uh, great, chum, great pumpkin Charlie Brown, I believe is the name of that, uh, you guys remember that show, where, uh, Linus is waiting out in the pumpkin patch for the, uh, great pumpkin, good old Charlie Brown classic there, uh, Anyways, watch that last night. That never gets old, does it? Joe, what's happening, dude? How about you? Are you a fan of uh, It's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown movie? I think I'm saying it right. I think that's the title of it. Um, anyways, uh, yeah. Watched that baby last night. What, what did I watch it on? I think it was on Prime. Yeah. Is on Prime, and uh, which I wonder, am I the only person who watches Prime? Uh, you got that, Joe? Prime video, or I think that's what it's called. Anyways, uh, which you know, I have Netflix also, but as you know, I'm, I'm I tend to like stuff a little bit, a uh, little bit out of the mainstream. Let's see. Uh, Joe says, "Yep, all the Peanuts cartoons are great." Yeah, I'm big fan of them. Uh, and we watched. Well, we watched it last night, and you know what was funny is, um, let's see, two of our daughters watched them, uh, and our youngest daughter, she's seven. And, and our other daughter's 13 was watching it with us. And uh, Joe says, no, I don't have Prime. Okay, well, Prime's a, a, a kind of a strange animal, and I'll, I'll uh, get to that. But we, we watched it, and you know what's funny is how different it is uh, that we're watching, you know, Charlie Brown or whatever, and my daughters don't even know the characters, you know. Now, I grew up with Charlie Brown watching the uh, Peanuts cartoons and and even the comic strip, reading that. So, always been familiar with them. Well, you know, my daughters didn't even know who Snoopy was, didn't know who uh, Woodstock, the little bird didn't know uh, the bird's name or anything, and I'm like, ah, oh, just thinking, wow, where did we go wrong? Um, so, we need to make it a tradition to watch these Charlie Brown shows, yeah. um, which I could have sworn these guys watched the uh, Charlie Brown Christmas episode, too. I, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, Prime's, Prime's a little bit odd. It's kind of an odd duck when it comes to the uh, TV world. Um, I don't know how we got it. it. It's, you know, I think, well, we're Amazon Prime members or whatever, um, you know, for ordering stuff. And, I don't know, we've had Prime for a few years now. But it... Uh, you know, it's kind of like uh, Netflix is the McDonald's of the TV movie services. And then uh, Prime would be kind of like, uh, I don't even know if it'd be Burger King, 
but it'd be more like Burger Chef was back in the days. If you can, if anybody even remembers Burger Chef, but it'd be kind of like that. But Prime does it for me quite a bit because I, uh, you know, I, not by. I mean, I guess it's by just by design, by the way I am. I tend to like things that are a little bit out of the mainstream. And Prime tends to have a lot of the weird stuff that I dig. Um, you know, it, it's... Uh, the problem I have with Prime is, is uh, using it on a fire stick... The, okay, Joe says, love Burger Chef. Okay, right on, right on. Yeah, Burger Chef was, uh, you know, they were kind of the, um, let's say Burger King and McDonald's, you know. I mean, those were like Coke and Pepsi, and then Burger Chef was kind of the hillbilly cousin. You know, it was kind of like the RC of hamburgers. Joe says they had a pole position arcade game in there. All right, cool. Good, good brain, dude. Good brain. Um, great memory. But yeah, Prime is kind of like, yeah, I guess if you're talking soft drinks, it'd be the RC Cola of, of the um, TV services, the premium TV services. But it has a lot of funky uh, movies that, Netflix doesn't have okay yeah Netflix has low budget movies on there but they tend to be newer low budget movies newer independent films um, whereas Prime has Amazon Prime has a lot of the older um, films okay on, on their services um, which I'm just going to get this out there. When it comes to low-budget movies, I'm a fan of several low-budget films, but I must say that it is very hard for me to get into a lot of the more modern low-budget movies. There are just so many of them, and they're put out at such a rapid rate that in order to um, sort through and swim through all the trash that is not worth watching at all and to find the gems it's just too much work it's um whereas a lot of the older films where where the movies were actually literally shot on film there tends to be a lot more of those uh low budget movies that i tend to like um i don't know if it's because i really think sometimes it's because uh you know, that in order to make movies back in the days when you shot on film, I mean, it took some real commitment um, because film cost a lot of money. Um, even for a low-budget film, you had to have the film developed, literally the film developed, whereas now, you know, um, you can have an editing suite in your living room and just shoot on video. And it doesn't matter how many hours and hours and hours of video you're shooting. You are not throwing away thousands upon thousands of dollars to uh, shoot these videos. So I, I think maybe, uh, I think maybe, you know, the percentage of movies that were watchable. And when I say watchable, I mean entertaining. Okay, I don't mean um, I don't mean high cinema, but I, I'm talking for entertainment wise. I think the percentage of entertaining films that came out back in the days when everything was shot on film, I think there was a higher percentage of watchable films. Okay, I've seen a lot of these modern shot straight on video um, films that. I, I really regretted watching because I really felt like I was getting robbed of my time watching them. Whereas a lot of the older shot on uh, cellular, you know, celluloid films 
Um, a lot of them, even when they were horrible and cheesy and stuff, a lot of them still had some kind of entertainment value. I'm not saying there weren't complete stinkers, waste of time, um, shot on film. By no means am I saying that. There were a great many turds out there. Uh, but I think there were, I think there was a higher percentage, uh, a higher amount of the movies that came out low budget that were at least redeemable for entertainment purposes. Whether that was just strictly laughing at them because of how inept the filmmakers were or whatever. Um, but that's what I've found. That's why it's hard for me to even attempt to watch some of the low budgeters now. What's up? Sean is Sean's with us too now. What's up, dude? I was uh, talking about the uh, low budget films, and but it, but Amazon has more of those older low budget films that do have a special place in my heart, so to speak. Um, they have a huge selection of obscure films from back in the days from from like the early 80s and back. They've got a huge selection of those. Um, a lot of good uh, science fiction and horror films and uh, just some of the more bizarre and obscure movies that, uh, not, that are really hard to find that usually aren't on DVD and Amazon has them on their service so that is cool now what is not cool about my amazon setup is let's see joe says uh the cheesiest movie i ever seen was operation condor with jackie chan okay operation condor yes i remember operation condor wait i'm trying to okay hold on here i'm trying to think here uh because what i do is i end up mixing up there's two Jackie Chan movies I always mix up, and that's Operation Condor. I seem to mix that up with the Project A movie, I think, or the Armor. It's Operation Condor, Project A, or whatever. I can't remember. Or I mix up the Armor of God with Operation Condor. Um, but uh, uh, one of them, <clears throat> pardon me. One of them was very Indiana Jones-esque. I'm trying to think which one was Operation Condor. And I know I've seen it because I know I actually have the movie. I'm just trying to think exactly which movie that was. Dog on it. Because I don't want to start talking about it. And, and here I'm talking about the wrong dog on movie. Um, so Operation Condor was was the top of your cheesy list. Okay. Um, I'll tell you what, if you want to see some good cheese for Jackie Chan, and this is one of his older films. I think it was shot in the seventies. It was a Kung Fu movie. And, uh, it was called half a loaf of Kung Fu. Okay. Joe says that was the Indiana Jones one. Okay. All right, cool. So I'm straight on the, uh, on which movie that was. Okay, that was it, Joseph. Okay. Um, yeah, there was, there was quite a, a big amount of cheese in that movie for certain. Um, but I, you know, I'll admit, I, I, I enjoyed the movie. I did. Um, I enjoyed that movie. Uh, and, you know, cheese or no cheese, uh, it's no secret i i don't mind some cheese you know but uh operation condor okay um because i if i'm you know i, I wish i dug on it i ought to have my uh you know what i'm out with this i've got the authoritative book on this anyways on movies now where in the hell is my book i gotta find that okay 
There we go. We'll go to my video how I'm dragging there. Um, let's see. There was a sequel to that, or was that a sequel? I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember, guys. Okay. But, uh, <clears throat> let's see. Ah, ah, Operation Condor. Okay was also known as Armor of God 2. Okay, that was that was a sequel. Okay. Um, there there you go. That that helps lead to some of my confusion when it comes to recalling this movie. Because another one of the titles was Armor of God 2. Okay. So also known as Operation Condor. So here's where I get kind of mixed up with them. Um but that one, and then the first one, I guess, was just called Armor of God, okay, which I enjoyed that movie, too. Shamelessly enjoyed those movies. Uh, but, yes, lots of cheesiness. Um, I'm trying to think if those, I can't remember. One of those, Jackie had a really, a really... It was silly looking, but also kind of a neato uh, small aircraft, I think, that he had hidden in some bushes or something. I'm trying to think here which one of those it was where he, like, pulled it out of some bushes and had this tiny, tiny little airplane and flew off in it. Um, but, yeah, like I said, he did a, oh my gosh, he did a movie called Half a Loaf of Kung Fu, which was a... a kung fu comedy back in the 70s i think um and then also did i'm trying to think i think jackie was in fantasy mission force in fact i'm gonna look it up right now here now that we're talking here i think he was in fantasy mission force or was that just hold on here fantasy mission force okay Fantasy Mission Force, he, he he was in, but not necessarily starring. Fantasy Mission Force actually starred a Chinese actor called, uh, whose name is Jimmy Wang Yu. Um, but Jackie ended up being roped into that. I, I forget. He owed Jimmy Wang Yu uh, a favor and ended up being in a few of his films. But that was... Uh, Rambo-esque movie that was, I mean, it was way, way out there. Um, it's been so long since I've seen that movie, I really can't even talk too much about it. It's going to be accurate, but that was a real cheesy movie. But, you know, Operation Condor, um, I thought was at you know, here's here's my criteria for a movie being a good movie. A movie, or at least a movie I like. It has to be entertaining. That is the main thing, is that it's entertaining. Um, you know, not every movie is going to be Citizen Kane, uh, but it can still be really high up on my list, even if it's shot on a shoestring budget. I mean, like... Um, the old Little Shop of Horrors movie, I don't know, you guys probably seen that, the old one, the old black and white one, I mean, talk about low budget, really low budget, and, uh, but I can still watch that movie, um, I can throw it in the DVD player and watch it right now and enjoy it, even though it was, you know, shot in a couple days, you know, that was another Roger Corman cheapy movie. Um, so, I don't know, I, it's funny, if you see, if I wrote a list, I've never made a list of my favorite movies, never made a list like that, uh, Joe says, it made me, it, it made me, or I'm gonna read this verbatim, you know I'm gonna do that, it made my laugh a lot, so it was pretty entertaining, see, so, it was entertaining, it, it just, you know, um, and that's where I think Jackie Chan is has a lot of talent, and I think a lot of his movies are successful because, I mean, let's face it, most of them do are not 
realistic movies. Okay, most of them are not um, straight-faced dramas. Okay, that <clears throat> are supposed to be taken realistically. Okay, Joe says uh, Jackie is a horrible actor. Um, now I'll tell you what. If <laughs> I'll tell you, Jackie Chan. I'll tell you if if you want to see him put to put to. Uh, oh my gosh, what the hell was that movie he was in? Um, was it Heart of the Dragon? I can't remember. My gosh, let me see if I can look it up in this book here. My gosh, Heart of Dragon. Okay, if you want to see Jackie Chan, put... All right, Joe's saying Jackie is a horrible actor. Okay. Um, I'll tell you what. Um, if you want to see... Okay, here here's the real deal. If you want to see Jackie Chan's acting skills put to the test then there is a movie you want to see if you really want to see and make that decision or make that choice one of the movies where he's really put to task acting wise is heart of dragon okay uh, co-star sammo hung and uh i believe it's it's been a little while since i've seen it but i believe that sammo is jackie's um, mentally disabled brother, okay, of all things. What's up, Jonah? Jonah joins us now. Um, but Heart of Dragon is um, very much a to-be-taken-serious kind of drama with Jackie and Sammo in it. And um, it's been a while since I've seen the movie. It was one of those movies, you know, I'm a Jackie Chan fan, um, but it's one of those movies where I think I watched it once, maybe, maybe even twice, not a hundred percent sure. Uh, I, I'm trying to think here, but, uh, unlike most Jackie Chan's movies, which are, you know, all about just sheer entertainment, you know, let's, let's do the craziest stunts. Let's have shit break and let's let's have these jumps and all this crazy stuff going on um this is it's a drama and and uh samo is you know like mentally retarded he's slow and he's and jackie chan is like his big brother looking out for him so if you really want to see of course joe joe feels just jackie's a bad actor but I think he did it. I think he did a pretty good job. Although the movie's kind of hard to watch. It's kind of hard because I'm used to seeing Jackie do some goofy shit, but you know, um yeah. That that definitely. I don't know. That that's the most dramatic film I've ever seen him in. Um so, and I thought he did pretty good. I thought he did pretty good, but Chinese acting and cinema tends to be very heavy-handed with the drama. You, you know, it's not very subtle like American cinema. It tends to be very heavy, just like the comedy tends to be way overboard compared to American or maybe English comedy. The, the Chinese comedy tends to be very slapstick, sort of. Three Stoogie, a lot of it is like that. Jonah says, uh, not, uh, Jonah says, nothing much. Just looking forward to Saturday. All right. So Jonah is looking forward to Saturday. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and say, why are you looking forward to Saturday, Jonah? Even though I pretty much know why. Um, we know what's happening this Saturday, don't we, guys? Um, yeah, if you get a chance, and, and you guys really want to see Jackie Chan's acting put to the test, watch Heart of Dragon. Uh, Joe says, I'll check it out, gotta get back, catch you later, man. Alright, catch you later, Joe, be good, brother. 
good good talking with you. Uh, Jonah, I suppose you're talking about the game, correct? Um, now it's a big deal coming up, isn't it, here, guys? And uh, let's see, Jonah, you're going to be at the game, right? Um, how about how about you, Sean? You going to the game too? I can't remember. I, I think we already talked about it. Jonah, it looks like you've got a new, I don't know what you call it, guys, your little pictures for your Facebook thing. It said an avatar. Back in the days, I think they called them avatars. I don't know if they still call them that or if that's not in vogue anymore. Okay, Jonah says the best game of the year, the chance to beat McKinley again. Sean says, yeah. Okay, so Sean and Jonah, you guys are both going to the game. Um, I'm sure you're both very jazzed. Well, Jonah obviously is. I'm sure, Sean, you're pretty jazzed about this. The chance to beat McKinley again. All right, guys, you want to straighten me out here on the Maslin-McKinley game. Uh, the other game, what was the score, guys? Um, and for anybody not from around here, the Maslin-McKinley game, high school football game, is, uh, is the biggest thing around here. Okay. And, you know, maybe... You know, some people, well, I mean, you know, the, the Football Hall of Fame, NFL Football Hall of Fame, obviously, is a big deal, too. But uh, aside from that, especially if you're a Maslin, there's pretty much nothing bigger than the Maslin-McKinley football games. That is the big deal. So, uh, the chance to beat McKinley again. So, what do you think, guys? think the Tigers are going to... Um, Think the Tigers are going to take another win here, um, because once again, once again, the pollster here has not kept up with the game, with the season, and and I am seriously thinking about uh, next year. I am seriously thinking about making myself. Taking a stab at trying to watch some of these doggone games. I am seriously thinking about seeing, hey, is there something, have I been missing out on something with this? Um, not, not watching sports thing, okay? I've been seriously thinking about next year trying to devote some of my time into, uh, Watching some of these sports. Let's see. Uh, Jonas says Maslin won forty-one to zero over Louisville last week to improve to nine to zero. While McKinley or McKimpkin, as I like to call them, lost to Perry thirty-one to twenty-eight to end their undefeated season. So our nine to zero Tigers versus the eight to one Bulldogs. Okay. All right, so let's see. So the Bulldogs are eight and one, and Tigers, of course, are nine and zero. And the big game is coming up this weekend. And uh, as, yeah, it is definitely a spectacle. The game is always very exciting. Uh, but next year, I'm I'm. Seriously thinking about this is weird for me because I have not watched kept up with sports. I am thinking about next year watching football games. See if I've been missing out on something here. And uh watching some baseball games. And uh I I'm not trying to make myself a sports fan. But I am just going to see if it catches on with me. See if, like I said, see if I'm missing out on something. Um, maybe I am. You know, um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe being surrounded by sports fans, um, 
I don't know. And, and since I, I don't know. I don't know why I've never gotten, gotten wrapped up in the uh, football game thing. I really don't know. But I'm going to see. I'm going to see if I'm missing out. Let's see, Jonah said, uh, records never matter when you get to this game. Anything can happen. It is always a bloodbath against McKinley. Yeah, yeah. And that's something we've definitely talked about before. The uh, numbers kind of go out the window when it comes to the masculine McKinley game because both sides want it so bad that uh, neither side can let their guard down uh, because of you know, they can't, you can't just say, well, we've been kicking ass so much and they've been sleeping all year, so it's going to be an easy win. You can't do that stuff with this game. It, it, the whole thing comes alive and it is, uh, it is a spectacle. It is, uh, it's quite the show. It definitely is. The stadium gets charged with energy, the crowd goes crazy, it's, it's something, it's, it's really something to see, and not being a sports guy, per se, uh, it, I still can still enjoy, um, I still have enjoyed any time I got a chance to actually see that game, it's definitely been well worth it. It is wild. Let's see. Um, Sean says uh, eight to one is still a great record. We still have a tough team to beat. Yeah, eight to one does not seem it's not uh, it's nothing to sneeze at, is it? Jonah says the one thing you missed last week at the Louisville game was that they tried to start a fight with the Tigers before they ran on the field. Huh. And also the Louisville fan base through some racist slurs out there. I only know by walking by some ignorant fans using choice words towards our players. Really? Really? I mean, you know, I don't want to stereotype the Louisville crowd. I'm sure not everybody is from Louisville is like that. But I have always heard that there was, uh, that there were a lot of racist people in that community. You know, whether or not that's true, I don't know. But that's funny because I've, I heard that back in the days that there were a lot of racist people in Louisville. And then here you are, Jonah, telling me that you heard people throwing out uh, racial slurs while you were at the game. Huh. So maybe there's something to that, huh? Nice. They were saying that at the players? Towards, uh, were they, like, yelling this? Or what? I mean, what the hell? And and that's that's another thing, is this game is, you know, the high school football is such a big deal around here. People, I think, sometimes forget that these are kids playing. You know, I, I think people get so emotionally charged with this shit that, um... Uh, that they just, I don't know, take it way too serious. Uh, Sean says, I remember not too long ago there was a cross burning in someone's yard. Really? What the hell? Nice. Real nice. It's like we went from uh, 2018 straight back to 1918 here. Let's see, Sean says, not even 10 years ago. Wow. Wow. And that's the thing, you know. You figure we're past that, but uh, the fact of the matter is that we, uh, most of us, are past that, I, I believe. But there's still got to be troublemakers out there. Cross burning. GAs. What the hell? Talk about low, huh? Boy, oh boy. And that was that was Louisville, huh? See? Yeah, maybe there is something to it. Ah. Sean said, I believe it was in 2010. Why do people do that? 
that shit. Well, you know what? Uh, it's like they say, haters gonna hate. Um, and I've talked about it before, you know, there are just, there are people out there who are miserable about shit and they've got to, uh, they feel they got to take it out on somebody. So, you know, sometimes that somebody is a whole group of people that, that people want to take their misery out on. You know, it, it's sad. Uh, it's actually, it's kind of sad for the people who do that shit, if you think about it. Um, not, not saying I sympathize with them or their cause, because I don't, but I'm saying it's sad that, um, that somebody would let their life go by being consumed by hatred. Because life is just so short, you know? It, it's, it's, it's too short to waste having a hateful mentality, you know, you just, you gotta miss some, I can't see how you can be in that mindset and, and really enjoy the most out of life, you know, thinking that way. Let's see, uh, Jonah says we do have a challenge, yes. Well, I've looked into McKinley, um, is that their defense can't stop the run game. Perry ran the ball down their throat. Let's see. Uh, we have a great running back who has broke school records for career rushing yards and touchdowns. McKinley has good pass coverage, but we faced East St. Louis, who was huge and had great pass and rush coverage, and came out on top 46 to 40. Regardless, we will see who comes to play 2 p.m. this Saturday at Paul Brown Tiger Stadium. All right, thanks. Thank you very much for that information. Um, yeah, I guess we are going to see what happens, huh? Well, no doubt it will be exciting. Uh, that's one of the things I do miss about cable is uh, being able to see some of the uh, local stuff. Um, uh, I don't know how many years it's now been since I've had cable, but... It's been a while, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be an exciting one, no doubt. Uh, let's straighten up the camera there, guys. Um, so the football game, you guys are both going to be there, and I'm sure you guys will be in your orange and black, wearing your colors proudly. Oh, here's what I was saying. Was uh, Jonah, I see you got a new avatar or whatever, which you've got Obi the Tiger up there. And I cannot read. Let me try and look real close here. I can't read what your logo says on your avatar thing. I think they're called avatars. I'm not sure. You know, it might, it might not be called that anymore. Uh, Jonah says, I was told that the Louisville community isn't fond of anyone of African-American culture living in the community. I also heard they would run them out. Uh, if all that is true, I really feel bad for those people. I'm not trying to point fingers and call everyone in Louisville racist by no means. Yeah, I, I figure that probably the majority of people, I would think, probably are not of that mentality, uh, I would hope. What the hell is going on with my glasses here? Uh, yeah, I would hope not. I, like I said, I think it just seems like a miserable ass way to live, doesn't it? I mean, each to their own. You know, I, I believe everybody's entitled to their own opinion, even if that opinion, uh, even if their opinion, in my opinion, stinks, they're entitled to it. But uh, as long as they're not hurting anybody, uh, but it just, it just seems, I don't know. I don't understand it, uh, but you're going to have people like that, I guess, no matter what, whether it's popular or not, whether, it, I don't know. 
Life's too short. Life's too short to live like that, in my opinion. But, you know, that's my opinion, though, isn't it? Uh, not everybody thinks that way. Which is alright, as long as people, you know, like I said, I think people are entitled to feel the way they are as long as they're not cramming their opinions down other people's throats and trying to uh, forcefully convert them or or intimidating other people or physically threatening or hurting people, you know. Everybody's allowed to have their own opinion, I guess, but... What are you going to do? Uh, you know, this is why, you know, there will never be world peace. Uh, which, that sounds sad to say, but I mean, there won't be. It's just, you know, you're always going to have trouble. You're always going to have trouble, man. You know. But anyways... So, the football game's a big deal. Anything else exciting going on with you guys lately? Um, right now, I have two cars on the road. Well, they're not on the road right now, but I mean, they're, they're running now, so that's good. Personally, with me, that's what's going on. And uh, I'm, I'm starting to actually embrace the fall season now. Um, you know, because guys were paying attention to me uh, at the end of summer you know I really did not want summer to end not at all um, because which summer is my favorite season because it, it inspires me to be outside and kind of agitates me into being active so I like summer uh, Sean says great news all right well share with us share the great news Sean I like great news I love great news. I welcome it, so let us in on it. Let us in on it. Because um, uh, uh, I'd love to hear it. But yeah, I'm starting to I'm starting to kind of embrace fall in October. Um, starting to enjoy it a little bit. Uh, Sean says, we need to start planning on finding those melon heads. You're damn right, we do. Um, let's see. Um, I have a minivan. That does anything. You know, you can carry people and stuff, you know. Um, for what that's worth. I don't have any of that tech gear. don't have uh, fancy cameras and stuff you know in fact I don't even have the capability of filming and storing it you know okay uh, Jonah that's funny I'm gonna read what Jonah has to say and that's funny because I just said that is that uh, Jonah says my new profile picture says haters gonna hate it's funny just said something about that, although probably about something different because you got Obi the Tiger. Uh, this picture came about after our 101.26 point victory over Sun Valley, PA. Um, I'm going to click the see more here. Um, so many people would bash Maslin for racking up the score or not taking starters out when in all reality... We pulled the starters at the end of the first quarter. Also, at halftime, we had contact with their coach and said we would call the game early or shorten the quarters. He declined and said they will play. Later on in an, in an interview, he complained on how we racked up the score and would not let up. We put kids in that never get to see playing time under the Friday night lights. You can't just say, take a knee or run out of bounds. Well, yeah, that and, and Jonah, yeah, he's talking about that was a very, if you're not from around here, guys, that uh, Sun Valley PA game. 
very controversial after it because that, uh, like Jonah just said, what was that, 101 to 6 win? You know, there were people pissed off about that and complaining about, you know, how bad we flatten those guys. Um, Sean says, hey, I vote Jonah as a sacrifice if necessary. Oh, wow. Much love, Sean. Nice. Well, Jonah, sounds like Sean wants to sacrifice you to the Melonhead kids. The feral little evil bastards. Um, that's very sweet of you, Sean. Wow. Yeah, I... You know, that 101 to 6 game thing, I mean... I agree with what other people said, that with what I've heard, and I, I do agree that uh, these kids are trained, taught to play the game and be competitive, and um, that's just how it is. Um, you know, one of my sons is a wrestler, and um, I think if he were on the mat, and, well, I know if he's on the mat, and... Let's say he just outskills he's somebody and outclasses them. Uh, he's not going to let up on them just because he's better than them. And vice versa. I mean, if there's somebody who's way better than him, they're not just going to say, Oh, okay, well, I'm a lot better than you. I'm going to take it easy on you. No, that, that shit would not happen on the mat for certain. So... Let's see, Sean says, or we could all just hug them. Jonah says, I thought you loved me, man. Where will you get all of your football info from now? Don't make me bring up the time where you got lost in Gettysburg. Oh, shit, I didn't know that, Sean. You got lost in Gettysburg, huh? Is that scary? Sean said, give them some candy. Oh, wow. I just imagine if we really do run into one of these little melon head bastards. I'm going to, you know, they're going to get me. You guys are young and skinny, you know. I can't outrun shit. Um, I'm just going to have to fight for my life, which, you know. Uh, you guys will leave me to get eaten by some cannibalistic little kids. I guess those are the breaks here, but uh, Sean says give them some candy. Yeah. Oh, tis the season, isn't it? Um, which, yeah, how about you guys? Anybody else have troubles with the whole um, changing of the seasons? Anybody else have any, you know, um, I don't know what you want to call them. You want to call them anxieties? I, I don't know what you want to call it. Uh, the whole transitions of the seasons. Anybody else have a tough time with that at all? Um, I don't know why I do. Um, I think maybe part of it is when I was a kid, I didn't give a damn what, what season it was. I was outside. I was active no matter what, period. So maybe that has something to do with this. Um, Sean says, uh, and hope and pray to the good Lord above, they don't take a chunk out of us. <laughs> nice. Okay, Jonah's got a follow-up. Whoops, let me see, I just messed that up. Let's see, Jonah's got a follow-up on that Gettysburg thing, I think. Uh, Jonah says he wanted to go to a haunted house, which was literally two streets over from the hotel. He went out to find it, and only went street over. He came... Ack, which I mean, <laughs> which I think means back, and said, well, I couldn't find it, but I found the gift shop. Okay, so he found, he didn't find the haunted house, but he found the gift shop to the haunted house. You would think that would be like attached to the haunted house. Okay, Jonah says, I do have some troubles with the changes of seasons. It me it does mess with my sinuses. Okay, well, so it affects you in that way. Physically, the changes of seasons affects you. Okay. Well, 
Yeah, I don't know. I have this thing sometimes where it's like, I don't know uh, what it is. It just seems like when the change of the season comes, it, it kind of affects me. I don't know if you want to say spiritually, mentally, psychologically, or whatever. It can be a little bit weird for me. I don't know what the hell that's about. Um, it can be. I see, Sean says, don't bring up the numerous times you threatened to sacrifice me to the demons of Gettysburg. Uh, Jonah says he came back with a bunch of stuff. So, um, Sean says, don't make me. Uh, Jonah says he came back with a bunch of stuff. So what'd you get from the gift shop, dude? What'd you get from the gift shop? I'd like to hear about this. So you went to find a haunted house, found a gift shop. Um, Jonah says you threatened to sacrifice Iamod. Sean, don't pull that card on me. I believe these are tearing up smiley faces. Oh, wow. Okay, Sean says a shirt. So you got a shirt. What did this shirt say? What was on this shirt? Was it, uh, was it something like, I went to the such and such haunted house and, or my, my friend went to the such and such haunted house and all they got me was this crummy shirt or what? Wow. Yeah. Never been to Gettysburg guys. It sounds, but glad you guys had a good time. I, re I remember talking to Sean over the summer about how he, he was telling me about how he's going to Gettysburg and he was really excited about it. And uh, so it was really cool uh, hearing from you guys afterwards, hearing about how it went because, you know, I mean, Sean had me excited about it and I wasn't even going to Gettysburg, but he was talking about it so much and it was very interesting what he was talking about that I, I kind of got roped into it like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, when you guys went and came back and told me about it, and then I met Jonah, it was like, oh, wow. Well, glad you guys had a good time. Sean says, uh, that's only because he was being a real scaredy cat about a certain object. Jonah, you're being accused of being a scaredy cat. So, um, you want to clarify this? You know, speak up for yourself on this about a certain object. Um, what do you believe Sean is saying you were scared about here? I'll tell you what, I don't know if I can, but what would be really slick? I don't know if I can do it. It would be um, cool if I could do it like three person split screen. I don't know if I can do that though. I don't think I can. Uh, Sean says, no, I am odd was, uh, Jonah says it wasn't me that was scared. It was actually I am odd. Okay. So, well, Sean agrees with you on that. Well, what was, what was I am odd scared of anyways? What was he afraid of? I'm going to grab my vapor guys. So I'm not smoking like a chimney here. What was you guys buddy afraid of guys? I mean, we're talking a grown man here. You guys are grown men now. You're not supposed to be scared of stuff. You're not supposed to be scared of things unless, you know, well, that's not true. There are things that are scary no matter how old you are, I guess, like bombs. Bombs are scary. Let's see. Sean says a board. <sighs> He was afraid of a board? Okay. Jonah's doing a little clarification here. We made a homemade Ouija board on the back of a cereal box to scare Iamod with. I wrote property of Iamod Williams on it as well. You dirty dog, you. Wow. So that got him freaked out. Okay, I can understand that because, you know, you guys, we've talked about the Ouija board thing before and, um, you know, I'm kind of a um, wishy-washy 
on on some of the spiritual things uh, where you know I on the one hand I don't believe in ghosts or whatever but on but there's still part of me that says eh, maybe it's best not to play with that shit like a Ouija board maybe it's best not to play around with it Jonah says I think I still have it too um, you ought to frame that dude you ought to frame that you know keep that memory keep that memory preserved you ought to frame that Ouija board there I would, I'd do that, dude, so, you know, because that's something, you'd look at that baby, and it's just gonna, can't click my fingers, hold my vapor in my hand, it's, it's gonna bring up those memories all the time, Sean says, don't you have one, Paul, yes, I do have a Ouija board, but no, I have not busted it out, I have not tried it, because of that, uh, that, strange reservation inside of me that says, you know what, um, better safe than sorry, which, um, which, uh, you know, I, I mean, just in case there, there's a just in case kind of, uh, part of my consciousness that says, you know what, um, it could be possible. Maybe, maybe these spiritual things are real. Um, I would say about a year or so ago, um, I, I might have been willing to mess around with one. Sean says, I know you want to play one. I don't know, dude. I don't know. I do not know. Sean says, does the Bible day... Bible day... <laughs> anything about this, but I think Sean means, does the Bible say anything about this? Okay. Um, I do not know. I do not know. I think there is something in the Bible about people communicating with the dead or something. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but I am not a theologist. Sean says, say, I mean. Yeah, I figured you meant say, but you know how I'm, I'm, I'm a jerk like that. How I'm going to read this stuff exactly how it says, guys, because I just, you know, I hate spell check too. I hate spell check with a passion, but it does sometimes lead to some funny, funny stuff popping up. Um, does the Bible say anything about it? I am not sure. I'm not a theologian. Um, and, uh, I don't know if I mentioned this before guys, but I found something, uh, a couple weeks ago and, uh, it is a one year Bible. Okay. And it was my mother's. Okay. And, uh, and how it is laid out, this, this Bible is divided up into one-day segments, okay? And it is designed so that you can read through the whole Bible in one year. You know, 365 sections of the Bible, okay? It, it's, it's divided up like that. So each day, you read some more of the Bible. And, and I found that... I don't know, a couple weeks ago, and um, I decided that I would start uh, reading it. So, I started reading it, and I'll admit, I fell behind a few days, so I kind of got to catch back up with it. I need to, see, I got a notebook that I keep track of things in, and I need to go back to my notebook and my schedule. I need to get back on schedule. Okay, I've fallen off my schedule, and I'm not just talking about reading, but also with my exercise routine and a lot of the things I do. I had a schedule, and I need to get back on my schedule. But, uh, you know, so maybe after 365 days of reading it, maybe I will know whether the Bible says anything about that. Let's see, um, Sean says, if it does, I'm certain it doesn't speak very highly of it. No, I wouldn't think. I wouldn't think the Bible has much good to say about Ouija boards and stuff. 
Uh, Jonah says, I've always been curious about the boards. I would want to find out if it actually works. But would I play one? I might. I might not. I really don't know. Yeah, and see, that's, um, that's the thing. If, uh, if, if it does work, let's say it does work, then, you know, I, I mean, none of us, let's face it, none of us are experts and I can't, I wouldn't think of anybody being an expert in, the, in, you know, I mean, as humans, we don't get to spend a whole lot of time being alive, okay? You know, let's say you lived 80 years. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, that's not very long. So I don't know how somebody would be an expert on, on necromancy or communicating with the dead or whatever. Uh, so I... I would think if it did work, if it did work, that would probably be more trouble than it was worth if it did work. You know what I mean? It just seems like that would be opening up a big can of worms, you know, if you could actually contact the spiritual realm with the Ouija board. Um, considering this is a realm that you can't see, you know, it, it'd be kind of like sticking yourself, sticking your hand in a very large bee's nest or something, or, or being in an old, old ass house and there's a big hole in a wall and you can't see in it and then sticking your arm through it to see what will happen. You know, which to me, just thinking about that sounds like a bad idea. You know, could be anything in there. And let's say you couldn't see in there. You're just going to stick your arm in there and see if anything happens. Sounds like a bad idea. So I, yeah, I'll admit, um, you know, you say it's old fashioned mentality that, um, you know, got some kind of caveman mentality where I'm, you know, uh, where I don't want to play around with the Ouija board, but, well, that's, that's me, and, and that's the way I feel on it, so I'm not going to piss around with it. Uh, Jonah says, uh, only fear is contacting something demonic and unwanted. Sad thing is, I would have done it to myself. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the thing. I mean, Sean says, scary thing is, is that you may not come back from that session. Your body may be possessed by another being. Yeah, well, I mean, that, that's the thing. If, this, if, if there's truth to this, okay, um... Because I do feel, I do feel that, that we are spiritual beings. I do believe that. I believe that. I think uh, human beings, that we are special in that way. Um, that doesn't mean I think we're perfect. Oh my gosh, of course we're not perfect. And, and, and we're not inherently good either. lot of people who do terrible awful things on a daily basis so I don't believe that either but I do think we are special I think there is something special in us something special about our very existence and uh, that I guess I would sum up as uh, having a spirit you know um, I, I do believe that so uh, now, that doesn't mean I necessarily believe that we can contact spirits, okay, but I also don't necessarily believe we cannot, so it's kind of like electricity, guys. I don't, you know, I'll admit it, uh, my house has a lot of electrical issues, but I'm not going to go and play with the electricity and hope 
that I can fix it, okay? Before I do anything like that, I've got to read and understand about it. I'm not just going to play with electricity, all right? I have a respect for it, and part of that respect is I don't know how it works, okay? I do not know the fundamentals, so I have to teach myself about this. Sean says, yeah, remember, Paul, you are the chocolate killer. Jonah says, beware the chocolate killer. Yeah, yeah, that. And uh, anybody new to me being the chocolate killer, that all stems from when we were talking about serial killers and some of them having backgrounds in working with candy and confections and things. And, uh, and that also happened to be around the time I was helping work with my wife making chocolate candies. So now these guys are dubbing me the chocolate killer. Well, I'll tell you, if you saw my stomach, you would agree that I have killed some chocolate before in the past. Especially if it has caramel in it. Or if you want to be fancy, caramel. Sean says he hides things in my crawl space. Put them in the crawl space, Sean. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm the chocolate killer, and Sean is the creepy guy with the crawl space. All right, I don't know what Jonah's creepiness is yet, but we'll find something to pick on him about soon, too. So just beware of that, Jonah. We're going to find something to pick on you about. So uh, Sean's the crawl space dude. I'm the chocolate killer, and we're going to find out something. We're going to find out something we can call Jonah names about. It's only fair. You got to share this love, you know. See how my vapor's hitting. I'm getting vapor. Yeah. I've gotten off my schedule. Like I said, I've gotten off it, and and it's it's wreaked some havoc on me. It really has. Um. I haven't done my treadmilling action, and I've started smoking cigarettes a lot more, okay? And, you know, which, if you're not a smoker, a lot of non-smokers have the mentality, just don't do it. Put them down. Stop doing them, you know? But usually people who have smoked before and quit don't talk like that, all right? They know better than that shit. Uh, let's see, Sean says he hides things in my crawl space. Okay, I already read that, sorry. Sean says, anyone want to look, oh, ooh, mistake. Anyone want to take a tour of my crawl space? Um, it better be a tall crawl space for me or else my chubby self is going to get stuck in the crawl space. Sean says you found your vape. Yes, that's right. I, I lost it the other day. And guess where, guess where it was of all places? It was on my coffee table, on my book, on my coffee table in the living room. But my daughter put papers over it. My seven-year-old put her papers over it. She has folders and notebooks and stuff and spreads her papers all through the house. Uh, you can tell wherever she's been because there is a trail of papers and, uh, and uh, stationary products everywhere and they were covering up my vapor and that's all it took was for a magical piece of paper to be covering this and for me to be like where's my vapor jonah says a competitive sports freak i hate watching my teams lose and i tend to get very hyped up at games you do sound like that so maybe yeah maybe we'll start picking on you about being a sports freak. Um, of course, we'd start doing that, and half the people who watch a show will probably think we're pointing the finger at them. Let's see. Uh, Sean says, beware of Jones team loses. You will be hidden somewhere beneath his backyard. Are you that bad, Jonah? Are you really that bad? Um, it makes me think of, you know, talking about this makes me think of that movie Anger Management. I don't know if you guys saw that. Um, with, uh, oh my gosh, what's his name? Oh gosh, he was huge at one time. What was his name? Oh my gosh, he was in Happy Gilmore. Why can I not think of his damn name? 
and Happy Madison. Adam Sandler, there it is. He was in it. It wasn't his biggest film. Him and Jack Nicholson were in it, and there was a guy who was in, in the anger management class with him who was a sports freak. And this dude lost his shit every time his team lost. That was his anger problem. Um, Sean says, beware of Jonas. Okay, I already read that. See, there, I'm rereading stuff again. Okay. But there was a guy, there was a character in the movie. He was a sports fanatic, and he lost his temper over sports games. So maybe you're kind of like that guy, Jonah. Uh, might want to be careful and watch your blood pressure on that. Let's see. Uh, yeah. And you know, anger management. Um, I'll admit it. That was not that was not one of Adam Sandler's big films. I enjoyed it. Um, I really did. But I like Jack Nicholson a lot. And I do like Adam Sandler. But, um, and the whole twist at the end of the movie was totally... BS, and there was a complete excuse for why a whole bunch of things were happening in the movie, which was pretty lame at the end of the movie. But there were a lot of funny things, I thought, that happened in the movie Anger Management. Uh, Jonah, uh, Sean says, Jonah is a sore losing killer. So beware. All right, so Jonah's a sore loser. Is that what we're saying? Uh, Sean says, I'm on the run from him because my Steelers beat his Bengals. Oh, boy. So the Steelers beat the Bungles. Um, Jonah says, I always tend to scream my head off. No, I'm not that bad. LOL. Sean decided to shake on jumping in his pool butt-ass naked with the loss to the Browns. Sadly, the Steelers and Browns tied that day. Oh, wow. Lucky for Sean, huh? Um, tied that day. He was going to do it, but chicken out. Instead, he decided to surprise everyone at the sliding glass window. <laughs> well, just leave it there. Oh, no. Nice. So he didn't jump in the pool naked, but... He surprised everybody at the sliding glass window. Everybody, I'm imagining, got a view. Uh, got to see Sean from a perspective or, or a side of Sean that they uh, probably never really wanted to see. Um, you know, that's funny about the butt naked thing uh, because what that does in my mind is that stirred up a memory. Uh, and you guys know that I'd like to share little antidotes and, and real things that happen, and I will tell you. Okay, wait. Jonah says he stripped and well met the glass up close. <laughs> Sean says, hey, that's personal. Okay, well, you know, here's the thing. is Sean, as far as that goes, okay, you and being personal, um, you just better hope, or if they didn't get pictures of you, you're lucky, all right? I mean, in this day and age where everybody's got a cell phone, uh, if they didn't snap a picture of you and post it somewhere, consider yourself lucky, dude. Um, because, you know, when I was a teenager or, or youngish man, that wasn't really a fear of happening. I mean, you could do some really goofy shit and, uh, in front of your buddies and unless they had a big camcorder out or something like that, you were good. Or maybe a Polaroid camera or, well, or any camera. But most people didn't walk around carrying cameras on them. You know, that would have been, you know. So you could get away with a lot more stuff. Uh, Jonah says, well, here's a personal thing about, about me. You made me do some crazy things for truth or dare, man. Jonah says, just remember that. Okay, so you guys were playing some crazy-ass cr truth or dare. Uh, sh <laughs> Sean says, remember I am on Kiss My Brother. Oh, gosh. 
Oh, wow. Where are we going? Oh, my goodness, guys. You guys are killing me. I am uh, kissed your brother off. I don't even want to think about it. Oh, man. Uh, was your brother consenting? Um, but back to the naked Sean thing. Um, I, uh, there was, uh, I had a group of friends I was running around with for a while. Um, they were younger than me. And, oh my gosh, Sean, I am going to read that, but it's going to be a second. Oh God, that's disgusting. Um, we had a friend that smelled bad. He was homeless. And, uh, we took him to one of those car washes, not the one where you just park your car and it just gets rolled through the car wash, but the one where you got to take a spray gun. And we took this dude. He smelled so bad. We kept telling him. People kept offering, hey, we'll let you use our shower and this and that, and he wouldn't do it. We took him to a car wash and stripped him down <coughs> uh, at nighttime in public, stripped him naked, and spray washed him. I think we even gave him a little wax, hot wax there with the gun too, with the sprayer thing. And uh, anyways, we gave him a shower that way. Uh, and somebody actually videotaped some of it. Let's see, uh, Sean says, oh gosh, this is disgusting. Okay, right after he said, remember I am on Kiss My Brother, he put, and drank water from his belly button. Ah, oh, nasty. It's disgusting. It's, ugh, my gosh, drank water from somebody's belly button. That's nasty. Man, who the hell thought that up? Jonah says, I had to singe hair with a lighter on, well, a certain region. Oh my gosh. Sean says the burning was on the Gettysburg trip. Oh gosh. Jonah says, I have the video of Iamon drinking water from his belly button. Okay, this is where I'm confused, guys. You're going to have to straighten me out on this. All right, did I uh, drink it from his own belly button? Or did he drink it from somebody else's belly button? And that is disgusting. That's horrible. <laughs> Jonas says, oh, yeah. Well, Sean, you kissed your brother's ass. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, shit. Sean says, I honestly don't remember that. No shit. No wonder you don't remember that. Maybe you could, it's because you don't want to face the facts. Oh, my gosh. Jonah says he had to drink it from Aaron's. So he drank it from Aaron's belly button. Ugh. Sean says he drank it from my brother's. Oh, gosh. That is disgusting. Who the hell thought up that dare? I mean, that is nasty. Oh, my gosh. Oh, man. It's disgusting. It makes me, it makes, like, hairs on my neck start to tickle. And skin on my back feel kind of curly. Ugh. Roughly, I guess, like a sure pay feeling. That's disgusting. Wow. Good story, though. Makes for a great story. But man, who the hell would... Who's thinking up this warped shit? My gosh. Uh, Sean says, we oughta do this again sometime. Okay, which I think he means we ought to do this again sometime. Uh, Jonah says, all of us, it was an open room dare. That person had to leave the room while we would decide. Oh, okay. So you guys were like a think tank. Okay. So it wasn't just one mind coming up with this shit at a time. It was, you guys were all 
you guys were all throwing your brains together. What's up, Clint? Uh, we are talking about some funky, nasty, truth or dare stuff that uh, these guys have done. Um, so this was a collaboration where you guys were all throwing these sick-ass ideas together. Um, let's see. Oh, gosh. Jonah says, Sean, that open dare came up, and you guys tried to get me to lick your cat's butthole. <laughs> what the hell? Oh, my God. You guys are sick. I said just shoot me with the airsoft gun. What the hell? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Are you killing me, guys? Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Sean said Aaron came up with that cat thing. Uh, <laughs> this damn fly tried to get my coffee. Jonah says, Sean, you are truly sick. How the hell did you guys just say, hey, go lick the cat's ass? <laughs> Sean says, don't look at me. Oh, my gosh. Well, that's what happens when you got these, uh, all these 19, 18, 19-year-old dudes in a room coming up with dares for one of their buddies is you get sick shit like this coming up on there. Oh, my gosh. Wow. <laughs> Oh my gosh, so you didn't go through with the cat there, right? Let me let me scroll back through that. <laughs> Sean that open dare came up, you guys tried to get <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Just saying it in English, God damn. I'm, I'm gonna reread that sentence. <laughs> oh my gosh. Reading it is funny. Seeing it in print. Sean, that open dare came up and you guys tried to get me to lick. You tried to get me to lick your cat's butthole. <laughs> you get. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry, guys. It's just. Oh my gosh. Oh shit. Jonah says hell now. So you didn't take him up on the dare. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Sean said that was truly sick. <coughs> gosh. You know, you guys said the thing about uh, I am uh, drinking water out of the belly button. You guys see me getting cringy about that. And, and I'm not. <coughs> I'm not squeamish, but that's disgusting, you know. It's really disgusting. And, uh, and then, then, uh, <laughs> then that cat thing came up. Oh, my gosh. Oh, gosh. <coughs> my goodness. <coughs> oh, gosh. <coughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, shit. I'm sorry. It's still, I'm, I'm replaying that sentence in my mind over and over again it's just about the cat and and seeing that uh let's see sean says paul you in on the next truth or dare session hell no hell no i am not getting in on that shit i will leave that shit up to you young bucks all right i am not i don't need that truth or dare kind of shit in my life man all right, I, I done did my goofy shit, proving how much of an idiot I was. I did that shit, you know, 20 years ago, so I don't need to do that shit anymore. Um, I know how much of an idiot I am now. I found that out a long-ass time ago. My gosh. I'm sorry, guys, but that just, just reading that shit is so funny. Um... You know, and this shit, you guys are doing this to your friends. So, I mean, my goodness, I can only imagine what you'd uh, come up with for your en enemies if you guys were, you know, terrible. 
And Jonah says, come on, Paul, we can get some creative shit for you. Nah, I'll pass on that. I'll, I'll tell you. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm good there, guys. Don't need it. Uh, uh, you know, I'll go ahead and I'll bow out of that one. My gosh. Don't need to, I don't need to, you know, I'm not good at ass kissing anyways. Uh, human, cat, whatever. Um, I don't want to drink out of navels. Let's see, uh, Sean says, uh, we will leave Aaron out of it, so no cat stuff. I honestly don't know why he even suggested that. <coughs> well, I don't know, but, you know, luckily he did, because I got to read that, you know, because that was funny as shit. I mean, whether, you know, so it didn't happen, but my gosh, that was, it was a lot of fun reading that. Disgusting as hell, I, yeah. <laughs> Very disgusting, but it's funny. My gosh, you guys and your truth are dare. You guys don't play around with that shit. Uh, wow. Sean says, that's why I always chose truth. Uh, Jonah says, I am odd, had a legit fuzzy navel. <laughs> nice. Nice. Now, I I have drank those, the drink, but, oh my gosh. Yeah, he did. He did have a literal fuzzy navel. That is so disgusting. Wow. Man, guys, you guys are something else. Oh, gosh. The time is 127 oven standard. Um, so I have to, have to, have to uh, sign off. This has been uh, a great session, guys. Uh, fantastic session. Uh, thanks so much for participating, guys. And uh, take it as a compliment for me. You guys are disgusting. <clears throat> Sean says, have a good day, Paul. Thank you very much, Sean. <clears throat> Clear my throat. That's all I need to do is have about 20 more cigarettes, right? Um, Sean said, put a warning for this one. I think I'm going to take your advice, Sean. I think I am going to put a warning one on this. Jonah says, have a great day, Paul. Thank you. Thanks, guys. You guys have awesome days as well. And anybody else who... Watch this show, stay tuned, uh, or, you know, hung in there with us and, and listen to it. I want to thank everybody for watching the show. Um, whatever you're doing, guys, be careful out there. Stay safe, have fun, and I'll see you later. Bye.